The Living Labs research project has concluded its two years of collecting data from 10 suburban homes in the city of Fremantle, Western Australia. The aim was to find out how much our behaviour and access to data impacts our home's environmental performance. And the findings are compelling. The 10 houses are all um, around Fremantle, so we wanted to make sure that they were all under the same weather conditions and the same climate. Some of those houses, they're just standard six-star homes, which is what you require to build nowadays in Australia. And some of the houses will be high-performance homes, which is seven stars or above. Over the first 12 months of the project, we collected data from each of the homes, tracking their internal temperature, power use, gas use, water use, and solar power generation. Now importantly, the householders didn't get access to their data until the beginning of the second year of the project, which was when we also conducted an audit and gave tailored tips so that simple changes could be made that would result in the reduction of energy and water use. At that point, the participants also set some goals and now we can see how they went when we compare year one to year two. In a nutshell, out of the 10 households participating in the study, seven were able to reduce their electricity use, seven again were able to reduce their water use, and out of the homes that use gas, all except one were able to make a reduction. Alex and Renee, who live in a renovated 1950s weatherboard home, along with their two kids and a dog, had a goal of reducing water and electricity use by 10%. And they did it, with electricity use decreasing by 11% and water use by a whopping 33%. Yeah, it's been really interesting to see how, um, yeah, there are lots of little things we, do, we can do. So we, we think we put a lot of effort into this and we're on top of most of it, but you know, that, that extra opportunity just to have another look and you know, the, the, seeing the data as well. You know, giving us a bit more motivation just to have another go and seeing where we can tighten things up again. Any major surprises for you? How easy it was to change to bring the water use down. What well, was probably a few hours work of just fixing up, tidying up the irrigation, turning off a few things and then the um, putting the flow restrictors on the taps mm. made a huge difference and it was really easy. The project helped Alex and Renee to focus on what they already knew, but motivated them to make lots of small changes, which paid off. For Jason and Kate, who live in a 1930s timber cottage with a solar passive extension, along with their three kids, dog, chooks and lizard, the impact was made more through the contact with the research team. Definitely having you guys come over and go around the house and the garden and explain how those areas use energy and water. So that direct one-on-one -on -one yeah. is the most powerful for you? Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be room for improvement, um, but you know that the things that were hard to, to sort of to modify were the long entrenched values, you know, like length of showers. Mm. The thing that I'll get out of it most was um, scheduling of the appliances, so that knowing that you know, if it was going to be a cloudy day, it was night time, we wouldn't put on or, or use heavy duty appliances like washing machines and dishwashers. So uh, that for me, that's sort of probably the thing I'll take away the most. The family had a goal of reducing their energy and water use by 10%. And they were just about right on the mark, with electricity going down by 7%, gas down by 13% and water by 5%. Around the corner, at this highly awarded eight-star high-performance home, Tim and Michelle have been feeling a little deflated, as the data identified some major hiccups with their solar system tripping and not working for a period of time, and a leaking pipe which lost a huge amount of water underground. But had they not been receiving the data through this research project, they may not have become aware for a much longer time, which proves that regular access to data is key in the efficient running of our homes. So from a house performance perspective, I mean, it's a beautiful design, you are comfortable in the home. Uh, was there anything in the results that surprised you? Apart from the problems, which I think 
have skewed the results a lot that we had issues with the panels tripping and with a massive water leak <laughs> that went on for a long time that we didn't really pick up on because we were onto the rainwater so you don't know how much is sitting in the tanks and how, and how much rain is replenishing it to know that we're going through an awful lot more than we should have. So without that metering that may have gone on a lot longer? Oh I think it could have gone on for years. So on that grounds would you sort of you know now be advocates for the value of more fine grain performance data in households? Definitely. This is a constant reminder about how things should be working and comparing it to what is actually happening. You can sort of jump on things a lot faster. Michelle and Tim's home outperformed standard builds by a long way already. But when comparing their first year to the second year of data, the solar system trip and water leak cost them dearly. Grid electricity use increased by 23% and total water use, including rainwater, increased by 13%. What are the great things coming out of this study that's collected an immense amount of data over a two-year period is that we can now see very clearly that whether you're in a high-performance house with the latest environmental technologies or in a regular Aussie build, the impact of occupant behaviour has a big influence on operational energy and water use. And when armed with the right tools, including access to real-time data, big savings are possible and that's something we can all do. You can watch all the videos from the series and find out more information and tips to put into practice at your place by going to joshushouse.com.au and clicking on the Living Labs tab. You can also join the Josh's House community on Facebook and contribute to the conversation. Cheers.